Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976 to comment and critique some of the clips within this video. Here at FBA History, we do not claim ownership to any of these clips. We use them for entertainment and educational purposes when it comes to critiquing, reporting, or educating when it comes to a particular matter. As U.S. citizens, we invoke our right to fair use. All comments and critiques are those of the individual and not of the channel FBA History. Now, he, he acted, he acted like a good nigga for the white folks. But I tell you, I don't want to, I don't want to even be around no more good niggas. I'm with them, no good Negroes. That's what they call Rodriguez, a good Negro. I want to be with the bad niggas, because I know what's happening with the bad niggas. That's where I want to be. I want to be with the niggas. I want to be with the bad niggas. You don't want to ride on the back of the bus no more. This is what Elder Davis will call you. And the bad niggas is not going to work for 18 or 20 dollars. No, I want to be with the bad niggas who go register and vote. Right. I want to be with the bad niggas going to swim on any God's beach where water is flowing. I want to be with the What's going on, family? It's your boy, H-U-R-U, the Great. And this is FBA History. Now, if you thought Joe Biden was going to shut up all the critics and reassure Americans and the world over that he's the best man for the job, and this big boy press conference was going to be the mic drop moment of the century, then I'm sorry to break the news to you. You are sadly mistaken. Not only did he prove that the DNC is committing elderly abuse, he also proved that democracy in the two-party system is a bunch of bullshit. And now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine, who has as much courage as he has determination. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. President Putin. We've got big President Putin. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, but I think she's not qualified to be president. So let's start there. Number one. The fact is that <clears throat> the consideration is... July 1st, 2023, Massachusetts began issuing driver's licenses to undocumented immigrants. Now you may say, well, what's the big deal? Other states are doing the same thing. Well, the difference is that Massachusetts driver's license does not indicate whether the person is documented or not. And this is really great because it prevents the targeting of undocumented immigrants by laws such as Florida's SB 1718. I really hope other states follow suit. But that's not the only thing that's bullshit. The so-called black media and these black politicians and celebrities are the biggest hypocrites and liars of them all. Hypotheticals. It is under attack right now, uh, right here with this very bill. Republicans want to throw up barriers because when people vote, they lose. Let me be clear. They don't want you to vote. They don't want to hear black voices, brown voices, LGBTQIA voices, young voices. Our fundamental access to our democracy is being politicized. And this xenophobic attack that we're debating today will make it harder for Americans to vote. My Republican colleagues will claim that requiring IDs is a small ask, but nearly 30 million people lack a valid driver's license. And about 15 to 18 million adults don't have access to documents proving their birth or citizenship. Americans don't need more obstacles. It's already hard enough. That's why I'm proud of Only citizens can vote for the United States Senate. Only citizens can vote for the presidency of the United States. So this extreme mega Republican voter suppression bill is not designed to solve any problem on behalf of the American people. It is designed to jam people up and prevent Americans from voting. The extreme mega Republican voter suppression. Bottom line is when Joe Biden got elected, mm -hmm. he said he wanted to fast track four million undocumented uh, residents to full citizenship. Black people completely ignored it. Mm -hmm. I spoke on it. I said, do you know why he want to fast track for a million? Because he know he's not going to do nothing for us. We ain't going to be motivated to vote for him November. So what he's going to do is have these migrants already set up with citizenship so they can replace the black vote that he loses. The migrants are being put in our communities on purpose, New York and Chicago on purpose, because they are what? The two blackest cities in America. They're the two largest cities in America. They're the two most politically conscious black communities in America. So if we can wash out the black with the brown in New York, if we can wash out the black with the brown in Chicago, Philly don't stand a chance. Atlanta don't stand a chance. L.A., Houston, Dallas, Detroit, Chicago don't stand a chance. The migrants are here for three reasons. Replace us at the polls. Replace us at the uh, low, low end industry jobs. Right. See, when Donald Trump said during the debate that Joe Biden is taking black jobs and giving them to migrants, 
He was correct, although he didn't say it because he cared about us, but he's right. When people say, what do you mean by black jobs? Get out your bougie feelings and deal with the reality. One third of black men have a felony. So there's a lot of jobs they will never qualify for. They are mostly what? Essential workers, warehouse, trucking, security. And a lot of those jobs are going to who? The migrants. So that's what he meant by black jobs. We got to stop being so sensitive and look at the reality of it. I was reading a report the other day. They said the uh, Latinos taking over his taking over the uh, uh, construction jobs. They taking them over mm -hmm. and, and the low industry work like your gardening, and your landscaping, completely taking it over. They're not the enemy. The problem is black people don't get as much opportunity. Mm -hmm. So then people say, well, you know, white people don't really like brown people like that. That's true. But you know what the difference is? They don't have the burden of accountability with them that they have with us. We built the country. Mm -hmm. So every time they look at us to deal with us, the bottom line is y'all brought them here and they built y'all into what y'all are. They don't have to say that to the Venezuelans. They don't have to say that to the Colombians. They don't have to say that to the Mexicans. So although they don't like brown, they will much rather deal with them than the black because with the black, there is a white man's burden that you owe them restitution for 246 years of unpaid labor. Now let's look at what Ari Adams is doing over there in New York. A family of four is getting $1,400 a month. $1,400 a month. Do you know that that's more than what some of the veterans are getting with a the child? Mm. They're getting more money than veterans who served in the military. Damn. Not only that, they're getting free food stamps, free child care, and permanent housing. Although New York City has a black homelessness rate no less than 35%. So you got black people who pay taxes living on the street, and you got migrants who ain't paid a single tax in their life eating and living better than the black people who built the country. If I was talking to Eric Adams and Brandon Johnson of Chicago, I would ask them something. What are the Democrat? What is the Democratic Party giving you guys that you're willing to sacrifice your political future to push this migrant agenda? Because I don't see how they get reelected by black folks. I don't see how. And if your city goes to the migrants, you can best believe the migrants ain't electing no black person to mayorship. So you're literally dying on your sword for the Democratic Party. Do you know that New York City has spent one and a half billion dollars on the migrant crisis so far? It's projected that this year, 20, so 2023 was one and a half billion dollars to take care of migrants. One and a half billion. 2024 and 2025, they said it will cost New York City nine billion. Chicago has spent about $350 million this year on the migrant crisis, and that's expected to quadruple. And you know what was so disrespectful about Chicago with regard to Brandon Johnson? Remember all them schools they shut down in Chicago because they said they couldn't afford to, uh, to operate them? Mm -hmm. They opened them up. Not only did they open them up, they renovated them. They renovated them, turned them into apartments for migrants. So you sleep upstairs, go to school downstairs. How is it that you ain't got money for jobs for black people? Which is a big reason why you got so much crime. You got all these homeless black people in Chicago, but you can take care of the migrants before you take care of black people. And that's why I'm hoping that black Chicago organizes just like co-founder of the Black Panther Party, uh, uh, Bobby Seale did at the 1968 Democratic National Convention in Chicago. Bobby Seale turned up and turned it out with the Black Panthers. I hope Chicago doesn't let President Biden and Vice President Harris come there because you know the Democratic National Convention is in Chicago, Chicago right. August 19th through August the 21st. I hope black Chicago don't let the Democrats come to your city where they have bred this migrant crisis and y'all don't do nothing about it. And I'm going to tell you who else needs to stand up and show out. Milwaukee. Even though they don't have a migrant crisis like Chicago and New York, the Republican convention is in Milwaukee next Monday, this coming Monday. And guess what? Milwaukee, black people are the largest ethnic group. Unlike Chicago, it's white, Hispanic, black. Milwaukee is black, white, Hispanic. But guess what? Milwaukee has one of the worst black male graduation rates in America. So I'm hoping that black Wisconsin goes to that Republican National Convention and exercise their First Amendment rights to peacefully assemble and protest. But don't let them come to your city after causing all these problems. On today's menu in this New York City kitchen. Caught. A chance at a better life. Yeah. Head Chef Candy is teaching her students the art of slicing and mincing. But this isn't just any cooking class. Each student here comes from another country, newly arrived and seeking asylum, as one of millions of migrants who've crossed the border in search of the American dream. Tuvimos que salir porque no teníamos otra opción. Era salir de Venezuela o era morirnos allá. 38-year-old Escarly fled Venezuela with her daughters, where she says the government seized the restaurant she owned. El gobierno nos quitó todo, 
nos quitó los sueños y decidí viajar para acá a buscar mejor oportunidad de vida. Her classmate, 41-year-old Maria, fled Ecuador after her husband passed away, making the treacherous journey to the U.S. with her mother and children. Teníamos muchos problemas a raíz de que mi esposo falleció. Este entiende todo lo que está pasando en el país de Ecuador. Eh, no está segura la vida de nadie. Both women now enrolled in English language courses and kitchen training at New York City's Manny Cantor Community Center through a program provided by the nonprofit Hot Bread Kitchen. We use the food industry as a catalyst for economic mobility. The Culinary Career Pathways for New New Yorkers program accepts migrants with temporary protected status or work authorization permits, giving them the skills for a stable future. What are you hearing about why they want to take part in this? The migrants and asylum seekers that we are working with want to be independent, they want to have agency, they want to work. And there are jobs to be filled. The challenge for us now is there's so many jobs open that it actually has potential to cripple our economy if we don't find more people to take these jobs. It is that dire. The New York State Department of Labor has identified more than 45,000 jobs open to migrants and asylum seekers as part of a statewide initiative led by Governor Kathy Hochul. 20% of businesses who say they're willing to hire the new arrivals are in the food and hospitality industry. The Hot Bread Kitchen Culinary Program, now training its second cohort, only growing in popularity. We've had 800 applications to date for somewhere between 60 and 75 spots. Maria and Scarly thrilled to be enrolled. La niña más pequeña de 10 años me dice que ella se siente feliz por tener una chef como mamá. And anxious to prove themselves. Para poder demostrar que no que no vimos hacer carga, sino aportar con lo mucho lo, o lo poco que nosotros podamos eh, aportar acá a este país. After six weeks of training in an industrial kitchen like this, members will graduate and go on to work in restaurants and even bakeries all around New York City. Holson Patisserie, a Brooklyn-based bakery, hired program graduates Carlos and Brianna, working to fulfill their dreams. No conseguía empleo, realmente se me dificultaba mucho y después del programa pues realmente solo salí y a la siguiente semana ya comencé a trabajar. Each graduate learning the recipe for a successful future. Quiero seguir escalando, escalando hasta llegar muy alto. Valerie Castro, NBC News. And this is when the saying goes, if you don't know history, you're doomed to repeat. And one thing I can say about the powers that be, they know history, and right now, they are in a panic. It's a reason why they are comparing this election to FDR, LBJ, and Nixon. These are all major times when the government lost the control of public opinion. Also, these are times when the black vote was at a toss-up, and anyone could get it. Because, let's be honest, the black community is the base of the Democrats. Now, he, he, acted, he acted like a good nigga for the white folks. But I tell you, I don't want to. I don't want to even be around no more good niggas. I'm with them, no good Negroes. That's what they call Rodriguez, a good Negro. I want to be with the bad niggas, cause I know what's happening with the bad niggas. That's where I want to be. I want to be with the niggas. I want to be with the bad niggas. They don't want to ride on the back of the bus no more. This is what Elder Davis will call you. And the bad niggas is not going to work for eighteen or twenty dollars. No, I want to be with the bad niggas who go register and vote. Right. I want to be with the bad niggas going to swim on any god's beach where water is flowing. I want to be with them. In the United States, the communist plans call for two revolutions at once. A revolution of a supposedly oppressed proletariat or working class against a capitalistic system that is supposed to breed wage slavery, unemployment, poverty, crises, and war. The second revolution is a revolt of the supposedly poor and oppressed Negroes of the Black Belt against the supposed lynching, segregation, social ostracism, and exploitation of the white man. Currently, what the communists call their Negro revolutionary movement, now masquerading behind the humanitarian banners of civil rights, is contributing tremendous momentum to the communist plans to take over the United States. In 1967, 126 cities were hit by racial violence, with 75 incidents classified as major riots. At least 117 persons were killed, more than 2,000 injured. Total cost, including property damage and other economic losses, $665 million. Was this massive exercise in anarchy a rehearsal for civil war and revolution? The chairman of the U.S. Senate Subcommittee on Internal Security, Senator James Eastland, answers the question. 
The drive for Negro revolution in this country is moving toward a climax. The forces which shaped, molded, and influenced this drive, and which now, to a very substantial extent, control it, have plans which involve major racial disturbances of riot proportions in some 20 cities of this country. The primary objective is acquisition of power by the communists. In the long-range view, this objective keys in with the communist purpose of overthrowing the government of the United States. H. Rep. Brown, national chairman of the Revolutionary Students' Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, confirms the reality of revolution. Here he is speaking at the height of the 1967 race riots in film footage not hitherto seen by the American public. We stand on the eve of a black revolution, brothers. Masses of our people are in the street. They're fighting tit for tat, two for two, an eye for an eye and a light for a light. The rebellions that we see are merely dress rehearsals for the revolution that's to come. We better get ourselves some guns and prepare ourselves. Stokely Carmichael, the new messiah of revolutionary black power, boldly sets forth the objective. This struggle is not a reformist movement which aspires to become a part of the United States. It is a struggle of total revolution. For more than 35 years, international communism, whose historic goal is the overthrow of the United States and the seizure of dictatorial dominion over all mankind, has been working among minority groups in America, particularly in Negro Americans, Puerto Rican Americans, and Mexican Americans. The vast majority of American Negroes, together with Americans of all races and creeds, have rejected the blandishments of communism. But today, world communism has established a beachhead here of mammoth revolutionary capability. And revolutionary black power has arisen as the vanguard. Our American system is in great danger. The United States is being hemmed in ever more menacingly by a world communist force which rapidly is overtaking our military supremacy. On the ground, in the air, in the oceans of the world, and in cataclysmic space warfare. And now the historic communist strategy of creating a revolutionary force within the United States becomes a looming reality. Since international communism first showed its evil, aggressive face to the world, strident voices in America have declared there is no danger and never was a communist danger internally within the United States. Millions of Americans have hearkened to this dangerous delusion while communism relentlessly expanded its powers here. Its blueprint for conquest now clearly includes an assault on American institutions from within, mob violence, guerrilla warfare, massive disruptive strife. Then, finally, undoubtedly, a climactic military move, simultaneously from within and without, to crush and take over a disrupted and weakened nation. The entire communist communications network gives clear evidence of unified planning towards such a climax. Here is the National Guardian issue of March 16, 1968. The National Guardian is listed by congressional committees as a communist front publication which has manifested itself from the beginning as a virtual official propaganda arm of Soviet Russia. This issue of The Guardian reports to its leftist subscribers throughout the nation that radical organizations of Mexican-Americans are beginning to join forces with revolutionary black power. The same issue reports that militant Puerto Rican groups are joining with revolutionary black power elements. The so-called poor white are being constantly agitated. Communists are active in efforts to organize them into a force that would ultimately join in the revolution to overthrow the United States. Revolutionary black power accepts its role as the vanguard of the revolution. This issue of The Guardian shows the way toward control of the federal government. Ultimately, black power here means that the black people will decide under what conditions the federal government can function. And before black power ever gets to that stage, violent outbreaks could seriously threaten the day-to-day -day operations of the government. A rebellion in Washington could be the equivalent of the recent guerrilla attack on the U.S. Embassy complex in Saigon. That is why they keep on talking about the black vote, the black male vote, the young vote. And as more people become aware of their lineage and begin to delineate from the so-called diaspora and the continuous online disrespect from immigrants that look like us, want to be like us, but disrespect us, has come to a boiling point where the rice has become foo food. What you say? Don't say nothing. Just give me your black card, bro. Just give it to me. For what? You in a room full of uh, white people, and you the only black nigga there. They turn There's only you, one white person. In the they room. turn you to an Oreo, bro. You said a room. You said give me, give me, give me, give you my black card. Yeah, give it to me, bro. Yeah, you mean your fucking food stamps, nigger? <laughs> I'm a Congolese person. I'm not one of you street American black hobo bitch. Bro. Okay, don't get it mixed up. Okay, you could have just came here, been nice. You could have a cool conversation. I'm not one of you black Americans. Once you don't go there. She plans to Congo to make one power, right? Don't cut him, man. I'm, I'm not one of you. No. Well, your boy, he was being mean to me. If that if that's the case, I'm sorry. We don't get down like that. Just give me some dirty rights. Also, those days of the Democratic Party looking over us and thinking that our vote is guaranteed are over. We see the games of hot potatoes y'all play when it come down to things pertaining to the black community. Or when it comes to immigrants or any country overseas, they quit to pull out the checkbook. 
I finally understand why they replaced Martin Luther King Jr. with Jesse Jackson in the Rainbow Poets. Because don't let them deceive you with that Emmett Till lynching bill. It ain't got nothing to do about black folks or lynching. And all bullshit aside, I thought I was tripping when I first read the bill. Until I heard Judge Joe Brown break it down. And it just reassured what I was thinking. Just go on and on. I'm getting um, no, little curse I, words. Apologize. I don't have a problem with what you're saying. It's on point. But the problem is, why don't we do something about it? We keep voting the same scheming. Steve. I'm not judge. And I'm a poll worker. I, I know. I'm not talking what's going about on you. in my I'm seat. not talking about you. I'm talking about us. Meaning the collective. We keep voting for a bunch of charlatan scoundrels. That don't give a damn about us because they've got a new ethnic group. They're rainbow, not black. Didn't you well, know that? That's, that's what true. our problem is. These folk are trying to cram a cult down everybody's throat. You can't put a cross, crescent, six point star, symbol for Buddha, symbol for Hindu things, send a symbol for Confucianism anywhere on government property, but you can cram rainbows up in there, fly rainbows on a government flagpole under the U.S. flag. That's what your problem is. You got to do In God we trust on the U.S. dollar while telling people about some damn abortion. This is unnatural. If you don't yeah, believe yeah, in God, it's yeah, unnatural. Yeah. And God you trust is 235 years old. They just haven't changed it. But the bottom line is, is that separation of church and state is real. There are consequences. I, about 25 years ago, I did three Five actually commencement things, and in three of them, the police had to be called because somebody insisted on pushing their religion, and the parents got to fighting in the audience, sometimes very violently. But right now, without being asked, people are trying to impose the rainbow as the official religion of the country, and the Black Caucus. I think all but maybe four or five members of the Black Caucus are also members of the LGBTQIA caucus, known as the Freedom or Liberty Caucus, I forget which right now. And they keep voting over and over again and supporting legislation for the rainbow cult, but not anything for black folk. And you see, even stuff that they try to put off is us, like, okay, the Emmett Till anti-lynch bill doesn't do a damn thing about lynching. What it does is it adds to the definition of the inclusive group for the first time in American federal law, your sexual orientation. For example, you don't need to kill anybody for it to be federal lynching anymore. You don't even need a mob anymore. One person who doesn't kill anybody can be charged with federal lynching if he hits somebody, if he does it because that person is of a certain sexual orientation. An example, you got a guy broke up with his woman and he's at a club and he's feeling bad and he sees what he thinks is a PYT and they get to drinking and slow dancing. The PYT's got on a tight short dress, nice boobs, makeup on, and then <laughs> grinding away and then the thing gets a heart on it. And you say, what? And it's, man, you a what, man? And then bust him in the jaw. That's federal lynching now. Did you know that? Yes, and, and they use our lynching. black young men to get reparations for the white LGBTQ and the white man. But you see, the <laughs> yeah, worst part yeah. is these Negroes. That's why we don't care about losing. Yeah, but, well, where do I get, where do I get these reparations? I want to sign up real Hold quick. Hold on, one other thing. The worst part oh, about it is, is what the Black Caucus is doing is putting in an application by dropping their britches and bending over or sitting down and gapping legs and whatever. And they become members of a new minority cult called LGBTQIA. Okay, so that's why we want to get rid of minority people of color. Anything that ties anybody to our fight. Because a lot of times the majority don't support that. Judge, I've been I'm talking saying, to people. They don't even know what this colors and this flag is burning in my profile mean. We don't believe in ideology of no damn continent. That's against my religion. I don't have no idol. about red, black, and green here, which is the black national flag by the way jesse jackson didn't invent the concept uh we started yeah, but it all goes back to marcus garvey who got ran out of jamaica who got ran out of here for oh, yeah. Afro -American. afro american was something we started using about 1960 not the majority 68. we no I'm you, right. not you the know, majority listen, listen it was 1965 it was negro 1966 it was black going out of 67 it became afro american mixed with black and then toward the end of the 70s 
it became African American. Jesse does have something to do with. Judge, I didn't see elder men slap the taste out of nobody's birth certificate for calling them African, just like they did when somebody called them nigger. This is a fruit booty bill. What's going on? I'm done. Cut the show. I'm done. Take me off. Take me off. Cut the show. I'm can, done. Can you make that commitment for him? No. Can you make that no, commitment? No, I don't want it. I can't hear. I do not want it. Against against my wishes. And then they back door with the Asian hate bill and George Floyd. Joe Biden didn't sign the George Floyd bill. What? <laughs> So let's just keep it a buck. Joe Biden do not care about the black community. And then Kamala Harris and the bougie black bitches of America come to Dallas. No disrespect to my black women out there, but Kamala Harris is trash. Also, she is not black. Reason why she continues to say. If we focus on the specific issues that have resulted in the greatest disparities, and we understand that that's part of why we're doing it. Listen. The, the reality also is this. Any policy that will benefit black people will benefit all of society. Let's be clear about that. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not going to sit here and say I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. But y'all keep on claiming she black, though, because her skin tone. What do you expect, though? Look at all the people who are defending her. So if y'all think I'm joking... If y'all saying that roller go trying to scare us, there he go fear mongering. Oh, and let me go ahead and say, y'all can go to that little reparations uh, rally on Saturday, November 5th. I think he obviously has a right to his opinion, but mm -hmm. uh, where I stand on it is this precisely the Republican National on Monday. And we have a Republican nominee who's picking a vice presidential candidate that he has to replace because he had to have him killed. He tried to have him killed. And rather than talking about that, we're talking about replacing a nominee who had, uh, whether you like this or not, uh, uh, President Biden has had uh, the legislative agenda that would rival FDR. And so I- The main people who the underground or the grassroots or the ghetto black people has been calling coons, griffs, and sellouts. And all bullshit aside, no lie, I am beginning to believe these stereotypes. Our elders were on point when they was describing people. And like the saying goes, there's nothing new up under the sun. And right now, everyone is beginning to show their true colors. Fuck these niggas. I hate niggas. I'm anti-black. Nigga, I'm KKK, nigga. I hate niggas. Nigga, oh, I'm KKK. No, nigga, I'm KK. Hey, let's go bring George Floyd back to life and kill that nigga again. <laughs> oh, why? Why do you skip Jews all the time? Why do you? Skip hey, hey, guess what? I hate Jews. That's so fucking. I, I I actually tweeted that. Though. Fuck the hey, Jews too. Hey Ryan. Hey, nigga, I'm Hitler. You and fuck Muslims that fucking rape little kids. Because no, they rape a little girl. Ryan, your girl name. I, I listen, Ryan. Right name. Yeah. I follow me on this account and next. I hate Muslims. Rape. I, I hate Muslims. Fuck Muslims that fucking rape little kids. Bro, fuck all you motherfuckers, bro. You guys are weird as fuck. Fuck all you Muslim ass fucking weird ass fuckers. <laughs> and the nigga, fuck you. I'm, bro, Muslims, and I'm a, I'm a, hey, Muslims, Muslims, Muslims wrong with you. You a thumb. That's what you is. Yeah, white person. I feel whole fucking thumb out. Man, look, look. Christians are gay too, nigga. Christians are gay, nigga. Bro, do y'all? I seen a black man shoot the brains out of a black man so bad it was crazy. Dude. Hey, all black people, bro, they, they're horrible. You don't understand. Are you gauging to see that. how? Yo, yo, nah, that's near, crazy. Near, 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 Finally, bro. That's my, I met my uncle that was two years old raped me, and he was back then. Listen, I, don't, I, don't, I like it, though. Did you enjoy it? Listen, no, 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 fuck Michael shit, B. Jordan, though. Fuck that nigga. That nigga's a nigger. Fuck is it, Michael B. Jordan's a nigger, bro. Michael B. Jordan's a nigger. I fucking hate him. Oh, fuck. Yeah, fuck that nigger. What's the relevance? Fuck you what, niggers. What, what were you wanting? So, yeah, wet back. So, I was going to say, I'm going to say wet back bitch every time you say nigger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say so, yeah, dog. Bitch. What was going to say? Game. Dog, if, you're you're a nigger. Nigger. if you're gay, you can't wet back. Etc. Et that. that. You care about if I say nigger? Nigger, I don't give a fuck. Ex Go anti nigger on these niggers. Bro, I hate Ex them. Go. Anti nigger. Go. Hey, uh, are you black? Go. Are you black? No. This fake facade of political correctness is beginning to come to an end 
and people just want to be themselves. And I rather have a person that outwardly doesn't like me and I know it for my own safety and theirs and deal with like-minded people in my own community than continue to force myself or force someone else to associate with me.